Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. Today we're going to cover the field strip procedures for the Beretta CX-4 Storm Carbine. Introduced in 2003, the CX-4 is a semi-automatic, blowback-operated, closed-bolt carbine. Its futuristic design makes extensive use of polymers with both the upper and lower receiver sections made of them. The design is simple and straightforward, and those extensive use of polymers allows for a design that fits together well, requiring minimal effort to disassemble. Let's take a look. And as always the case, before working on any firearm, you want to make sure it is free and clear of all ammunition. First step will be to remove the magazine, and the magazine release is right here. You'd simply press in on that to release the magazine. So we'll go ahead and release the magazine. We can see the magazine is free and clear. Next step would be to open up the chamber area so we can see inside there. And as we can see, it is free and clear as well. You can see down, down inside there. So we are free and clear to look at the features and controls and, and disassembly of the Beretta CX-4 Storm Carbine. It is a single action uh, trigger. Uh, it is a internal hammer fired single action. This is our safety here. You'd simply push in on that. It's a crossbar type safety. It's got the red indicator when it's in the fire position. You would push in and that would put it on safe. And then on the other side, you can see where it's it's just black to put it into the ready to fire position. You'd simply push the other way and so that the red's showing. This is our bolt release. The bolt will lock back on the last round. There's a little shelf on the magazine right there that will catch on the inside and lift that up to lock the magazine to the rear. So that lifts up. To release the bolt, you would just pull down on that lever, or if you put a new magazine in, or not a new, but a, a fresh magazine, uh, the shelf will no longer be there because the ammunition itself will push that down. So when you pull that bolt handle back, that will then there won't be any spring tension holding that up. So then it would uh, fall back into place to allow it to go forward. Of course, we have our charging handle right here. And uh, as far as uh, other controls and features, we have the, the rear peep sight. It's a two position sight. So we've got the short range on the first aperture. I have to flip forward to long range, and then it can flip forward one more time to fold it completely out of the way if we're using an optic. Likewise on the front sight, which is adjustable for windage and elevation. Uh, the post itself can be turned up uh, to raise and lower it for elevation. And the screw there, the inner screw can be turned to adjust it right and left for windage. The post itself can be folded down out of the way so that it, the sight line is clear for if you're using an optic. As far as uh, controls, the safety, charging handle, ejection, and magazine release can all be swapped to right or left-handed configuration. This is our disassembly pin right here. You'd simply push that pin out, and then that would allow the firearm to be disassembled. It is an upper receiver. This upper receiver section here is all one unit. The lower receiver section here is all one unit. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that disassembly. So first you just need to push that pin out, and you just push it to where it comes through on the other side, right there, and then just pull it out. Now I actually do recommend that you charge the bolt back to cock the hammer so that the hammer is out of the way. Uh, that allows for uh, easier disassembly. And of course, we'd already done that when we checked the chamber. So you can go ahead and put it on safe if you want so you don't inadvertently pull the trigger, release the hammer. So right now, uh, we've removed the pin. At this point, the upper and the lower receivers will just slide apart from each other. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the lower section first. We have right there our hammer, and uh, we have various components here. This is that bolt catch right there. Kind of hard to see. 
but it goes up and down and that's what would catch on the bolt to lock it in place. And we have disconnector right here, which is what resets the trigger to allow for the semi-automatic operation. Uh, this is really as far as you need to disassemble it for cleaning purposes. You can get access to everything in there to, to scrub it all out, wipe it down, give it a light coating of oil. So take a look and yeah, get this completely out of the way here. On the upper receiver section, at this point, this is our bolt assembly. The bolt telescopes over the barrel. So we'll take a look at that just a second here. Uh, essentially, you would just need to pull the charging handle back and it'll go all the way back to where that slot that the charging handle's in. When the receiver sections are separated, the bolt handle can come all the way back to the very back. Normally, it can't go back that far. And that larger section right there, you just pull it the charging handle all the way back and then it will just lift out. Then you can remove the bolt completely. And as you can see the bolt actually sits in this position right here on the inside. So all of this section here goes around the barrel and we can see the barrel and the chamber area right there. So at this point you have access to everything. You'd want to clean down the rails on both sides clean out the uh, chamber area, clean the barrel out on, on the inside, uh, basically wipe everything down, give it a good cleaning. This is as far as you need to disassemble this. Uh, special tools would be needed to go any further to if you wanted to like remove the barrel or something. Uh, but that's as far as you would need to go for cleaning. The bolt itself, uh, it is a big, heavy, beefy bolt. That's because it is a blowback operated firearm. This is our recoil spring right here. That's our ejector, which you probably see it easier from this side. When you're looking on the inside right there, when the bolt would go back, the ejector will pop forward. You can kind of see that there. And, and that's what would kick the shell out. The extractor is right here. And uh, this is as far as you would need to disassemble this for cleaning. Uh, at this point, you can get access to everything, wipe it all down and uh, basically scrub it all down, clean all the rail areas out, give it a light coating of oil, and then reassembly is just, just the opposite. You would align the rails on the bolt, they run along there, with the rails on the upper receiver, slide it in and forward, Line up with the hole where the charging handle goes. Then put the charging handle in, then you can push it all the way forward. Once that's in, then you would align the rails on the outer part of the upper receiver with the rails on the lower part of the lower receiver. Just like so. It slides together. Put your pin in. The pin can come in or out from either side. And we're reassembled. Give it a function check. And we're all reassembled. The tool is designed with its single cross pin that holds the receiver sections together makes for an easy to maintain firearm. The recoil spring is of a captive design, and really about the only thing I could think of as a possible negative is that the cross pin itself is not captive, making it possible to drop and lose. However, it is fairly large as far as pins go, and it's not round, so it's unlikely to roll away from you. Its ease of maintenance, low recoil, and affordable ammunition make this a great firearm for a beginner, and its capabilities still meet the needs of more experienced or serious shooters. As it was designed for defensive purposes, it also fills that role very well. I hope that this information is of value, and if you like the video, I would ask that you hit the like button and subscribe if you want to continue to see more like this. I value your comments and feedback, and as always, until next week, stay safe.